don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of miracles in the Bible. Lots of miracles. Um, a miracle is that thing that uh, happens that's unexplained. Uh, it just kind of, you'd be just, how did that happen? And we can't figure it out. It's a miracle. It's usually something amazing and astonishing. Doesn't necessarily have to be. And we have tended to think that miracles produce something good. The miracle itself is either a good thing or the results of the miracle are a good thing. But miracles, by and large, are good. Now, we could, of course, get into a little bit of a discussion about how one could describe a miracle and what it really means, and, and people have different views on that. I'm just sharing mine, just sharing mine. Um, sometimes we also get into a little, bit of a, a little bit of an argument about the difference between a miracle and an act of God in the Bible. You know those moments where a miracle happens because God does it directly versus a miracle that happens because somebody does it, a person does it, but with the power of God. Okay, but today, I just want to talk about miracles of Jesus for a minute. Um, the, the, Jesus did many miracles. Uh, there are many miracle stories. We call them miracle stories, and we describe them as miracles. And we have one uh, as our scripture story today, and it's a biggie. Um, because this is the one where Jesus demonstrates power over nature. It's a story from the Gospel of Mark. It's in all three of the uh, synoptic Gospels, the the Gospels that we call, they have similar storylines, right? Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John's a little bit different. He's a little bit more out there. Um, But Matthew, Mark, and Luke tell the same story. Mark, each has their own way of telling it, but Mark, in particular, has an interesting way of telling the story, and it goes like this. Jesus has been... Uh, working all day. He's been teaching and preaching and healing uh, uh, by, by the Sea of Galilee, the big, the big lake. And um, it comes to the end of the day. Uh, Jesus wants to get to the other side of the lake uh, right away because, you know, the mission continues uh, and there's stuff to do. So it's been a long day. They don't want to go all the way around, so they get into a boat and they proceed to cross the lake to the other side in a boat. But they're not alone. It turns out that some of the people who have been following Jesus have decided that they'd like to keep following Jesus, and some of them decided to go round by land, and some of them decided to get in boats and follow the boat that Jesus is in. So they do, and off they go. And it's late in the day, they're out on the lake, and a storm comes up. And the disciples are afraid. Presumably the people in the other boats are too, but the disciples in particular are afraid. And notice that Jesus, however, is asleep in the back of the boat. And so they go and wake Jesus up and they say, aren't you, aren't, aren't you aware that we're, 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 like, we're dying here? We're in trouble. And Jesus gets up and he says, Mark says, he rebukes the wind and calms the sea. In other words, he, he tells off the storm and calms everything. And then he turns to the disciples and he says, why why are you afraid? Where's your faith? And the disciples are astonished. They're amazed at this incredibly awesome miracle and, and they're a little bit now afraid of Jesus and say, who is this that he has this power over nature? That's, that's how Mark tells the story. And we have traditionally heard that story as one of those miracle stories of Jesus. It's, it's, it's a miracle story of Jesus like the changing the water into wine story, um, healing people, giving the blind their sight, healing the lepers, um, casting out demons, feeding the 5,000. It's in that same sort of lot of stories. There's a second story with a storm, by the way, where it involves Jesus walking on the water as well, so double miracle. Um, 
But this one, this one stands out because it demonstrates Jesus' power over nature. Truly, this is the Son of God. God's power over nature. And, and that's great. It's, it, it's great to, to hear the story that way. It's a, a story in which Jesus saves everyone by exercising his power over nature. You can see where I'm going to go with this, can't you? Let me, see, let, me, let me tell the story a little bit differently. This would be the, the, the story of Jesus and the disciples on the lake according to the Gospel of Mark, as understood by me. It's been a long day. Jesus and the disciples have been uh, with crowds and crowds of people because they've been coming to see Jesus. They want to hear what he has to say. He's teaching, he's preaching. They're bringing people to be healed. And that, that, that really, in particular, kind of takes it out of Jesus a bit. And so by the time they get to the end of the day, it's been a long day, it's been a tough day, Jesus is exhausted, and the disciples are like, uh, we guess we should find somewhere to stay, but that's okay, don't worry, Jesus. Uh, some of us used to live in this neighborhood. Um, I don't know if you remember, but, but uh, a few chapters back, um, you, you picked us, uh, and we were fishermen. And uh, in fact, we sailed on this very, this very lake here uh, and fished this very lake, and... Uh, uh, we we gave all that up to follow you. So we're, this is kind of our na- this our, kind of our neighborhood. We'll find somewhere to stay. And Jesus goes, no, I really want to get on with stuff. Uh, we need to get to the other side of the lake, um, so I can keep on, you know, preaching and teaching and doing this, you, you know, stuff you see I'm doing. Right? We 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 got to go. Okay, we'll get a boat and uh, off we go. And. The people around hear that too, and they go, uh, wow, okay, uh, we'd really like to follow Jesus. Some of us are not super happy with crossing the lake at night, so we're going to walk around, we'll hook up with you again in a few days. A few others, though, are kind of like, yeah, no, we're okay, we'll, we'll get a boat, we'll, we'll follow with you. The other disciples are kind of a little bit the ones who aren't the fishermen, they're a little bit anxious too, because... Some of them really don't like boats. They don't want to be out on the lake at all, let alone at night. I mean, you know, stuff can happen. And they're thinking maybe we'll walk around too and just like, ah, don't be afraid, worry about it. It'll all be good. These guys know what they're doing. They're fishermen and this is their lake. Let's go. And off they go. And they get out in the boat. Jesus lies down in the back. He's having a nice little nap there because, you know, he's exhausted. And they're out on the lake and a storm comes up. The disciples who aren't the fishermen are freaking out, of course. They're just, what do we do? What do we do? But the ones who are the fishermen are kind of like, hey, we got this. No worries. They're riding the storm across the lake. It's, everything's going, but the storm is really bad and it's going on for a while. And they could use a few extra hands, but the other guys, the other guys are like, no way. So they go to the back and they wake up Jesus and, and they say, Jesus, like we're, we're in trouble here. Help us out. And Jesus gets up and he says, oh, I, don't, I don't really know anything about boats, but sure, tell me what to do. Uh, great. Oh, you guys are doing great. And he starts to work with them. And he encourages the other disciples who aren't fishermen to actually get up and help. And he tries to inspire them. And he talks about how he talks about how he doesn't know anything about the sea or about being on a lake or in a boat or or fishing or anything like that. But but he recognizes that you know you can't fight the storm. You kind of have to go with it, see where it's going and try your best to just get where you need to be in the storm, on the lake. And the other boats see what's happening here too. And instead of turning back, they go, hey, we're going with those guys. And they, they ride the storm across the lake and they get to the other side. And the disciples all look at Jesus and go, man, you are amazing. You're just that was that was the most incredible thing we've ever seen. It's kind of like it's it's like you it's like you knew 
It's like you knew where the waves were and how. It's, and Jesus was just like, well, you know, this is the thing, you guys. Yeah, this is the thing you need to learn. Sometimes it's just about being mindful about where you are and being connected. Because you know, you guys are a part of the earth too. And just because you're part of the earth doesn't mean you aren't part of the sea. Because it's all part of the same creation. It's just about being connected. And so off they go on the dry land. Thanks for explaining away that parable, parable, that miracle story. I almost made it into a parable, didn't I? Kind of. That's the thing about miracle stories, though, isn't it? Somebody starts to give us a, an, an understanding of it, and it becomes explaining it away, because no, that story is about the power of Jesus over things, because Jesus is of God. It's about Jesus doing the impossible because Jesus is Jesus. What if the point isn't Jesus doing the impossible because he's Jesus, but doing the possible to show us we can too? What if, what if the point of the story is to show us the potential and possibility that's in us if we would only just understand that we too are of God and of the earth. If we'd only just understand that it's not about controlling things, it's about working with things. If only we'd just understand it's not about us having power over things. How, how, how often are we awestruck? Awestruck by somebody who has power over. However that power happens. We're, we're so impressed. But what if, what if the thing that's truly amazing is that that's not about power over, it's about power with, that the thing that truly makes a difference, the thing that truly transforms is understanding how we are connected to each other, how we have power together, that the, the power that we have together is so much greater than the power of an individual over others, that the power of working together, engaging each other, learning from each other, hearing each other's stories, opening our minds to the possibility and potential of others is so much more transformative, so much more powerful than having power over them and making them do what we think, making them be what we think they ought to be, making them be how we are. So I, I, think, I think that's, that's a key piece of Jesus' ministry is sharing with us how we might be part of the world around us in the world around us. N not, not about how we might have dominion over, but live within. How we too might become more truly who we are and how we are by engaging the world around us. And sometimes that means, sometimes that means figuring out a way to ride out the storm. Not ride out the storm. That, that sounds like I'm patiently waiting for it to end. And perhaps what we need to do is find our way through it in a way, in a way that stills and calms and creates creates rather than is destructive. Truly, I believe this is a miracle story. But the greatest miracle of all 
what would be if we could see it as, as a way to understand how we can engage the world and be part of things rather than try to control them. That that's what will carry us forward. That's what will carry us to the other side. To the other side of the lake, to the other side of the moment, to the other, to the other, side, of, to the other side of the experience that we are in. Because, because those experiences aren't going to be just storms and they aren't going to just be calm, lovely, beautiful days. They're going to be all of those things and everything in between. Living with the world is what carries us forward in life. It's what transforms and builds and creates. It's what it's what carries us through the moments of grief and pain. It's what energizes us with the moments of joy and understanding. It's what helps us navigate the stories of truth that we need to hear and brings us to the point where we can step forward in relationships that are that are are positive and affirming of who we are and who everyone can be that would truly be a miracle <laughs>